100 mile an hour tails. Goldilocks and the three bears. Once upon a time, there were three bears, Mummy Bear, Daddy Bear, and Baby Bear. One morning, Mummy Bear made them all some delicious porridge for breakfast, but the porridge was far too hot for them to eat, so they decided to go for a leisurely walk in the forest until it cooled down. It wasn't long before a girl named Goldilocks happened upon the bear's house, and smelling the delicious porridge, she went inside. On the table were three bowls. She tried the first one, but it was far too hot. The second was far too cold. But the third bowl was just right, so she ate it all up. Spying three chairs, she decided to sit down, but the first chair was too big, the second was too lumpy, but the third chair was just right. Goldilocks sat down, but as she did, the chair broke. Feeling sleepy, Goldilocks went upstairs. There she found three beds. The first was far too soft, the second was much too hard, but the third one was just right, and Goldilocks soon fell fast asleep. Just then, the three bears arrived home and said, Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge, and they've eaten it all up. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sitting in my chair, and they've broken it all to pieces. Then the three bears went upstairs. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, and she's still here. Some say that Goldilocks woke up and was so scared that she ran away never to be seen again. I have my own ideas. 100 mile an hour tales. The three little pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Their parents decided that it was time for them to leave home and make their own way in the world. But it wasn't safe in the big bad world as a big bad wolf lived nearby and he liked nothing more than to eat little pigs. The three pigs decided to each build a house to keep them safe from the wolf. The first little pig wasn't very bright. He built his house of straw. Along came the wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. And he did. Quite easily. The first little pig ran quickly to his brother's house who, being slightly more intelligent, had built his house from sticks. The big bad wolf arrived with a bit more huffing and puffing and blew the stick house to bits. The two little pigs ran to the third pig's house. This one was quite clever and had built his house from bricks. The wolf huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed, but no matter how hard he blew, he couldn't budge the brick house one bit. By now the wolf was getting a bit peckish, so he decided to climb down the chimney and eat the three little pigs for lunch. The pigs had other plans and they placed a big pot of boiling water in the fireplace. What happened next is a bit of a mystery. Some say that the three little pigs cooked up the wolf and ate him for dinner. Others that the scalded wolf ran off never to be seen again. I have my own ideas. 100 mile an hour tales. Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. She lived with her wicked stepmother and ugly stepsisters who were jealous of her beauty and treated her very badly indeed. Every day, they would make her do the cooking and cleaning and work very hard around the house until she was exhausted. One day, invitations to a grand ball arrived from the palace. Cinderella was very excited to meet the prince, but her stepsister just sneered and told her she would be far too busy cleaning to go to the ball. On the night of the party, they all set off leaving poor Cinderella behind. She was feeling very sad indeed when suddenly her fairy godmother appeared. You shall go to the ball, she said. The fairy godmother turned Cinderella's old clothes into a splendid gown and made her look beautiful. She turned a pumpkin into a coach, a mouse into a horse, and a rat into a coachman. But her fairy godmother warned her that she must leave the ball by the stroke of midnight, as the spell will only last until then. And so Cinderella went to the ball, and the moment the prince set eyes on her, he fell hopelessly in love. Cinderella and the prince spent the whole evening dancing together, and Cinderella lost all track of the time. Suddenly the clock began to strike midnight, and Cinderella remembered what her fairy godmother had told her. She ran out of the palace in such a hurry that she lost one of her glass slippers. It was the only clue the prince had to find his true love. He travelled all over the kingdom, knocking on every door in his desperate search for the girl whose foot would fit the glass slipper. Cinderella's house was the very last. The stepsisters eagerly tried on the glass slipper, but no matter how hard they tried, it wouldn't fit. Just as the heartbroken prince was about to leave, he saw the servant girl and insisted that she try on the slipper. It was a perfect fit. Cinderella married the prince and they lived happily ever after. As for the horrid stepmother and stepsisters, they got exactly what they deserved. 100 mile an hour tales. The three billy goats gruff. Once upon a time, there were three billy goats who lived quite happily munching grass in their meadow until one day the grass was all gone and they had nothing to eat. On the other side of the river, there was a large hill covered in succulent green grass. Unfortunately, the bridge across the river was guarded by a hideous troll who would eat anyone who dared to cross. The billy goats were terrified, but they were so hungry that they decided to face him. The first to cross was the smallest billy goat, who was stopped by the ferocious troll. Don't eat me, said the smallest billy goat. My bigger brother will be along shortly, and he'll be a much more satisfying meal than I would be. The greedy troll agreed and let the smallest billy goat cross the bridge. Next came the middle-sized billy goat, and again the troll threatened to gobble him up. My even bigger brother will be along in a minute he said, and he would certainly make a much more gratifying feast. Again, the greedy troll agreed and let the billy goat cross the bridge. Before long, the third billy goat arrived. Don't eat me, he said. My huge, delicious, succulent, plump brother will be along in a moment. You should wait for him. Once more, the troll agreed. 
By now, he was quite peckish and excited at the prospect of a good meal. The troll couldn't believe his eyes. It was the biggest goat he had ever seen, and without hesitation, he swallowed it whole. Unfortunately, his greediness led to a slight case of indigestion. Needless to say, the three billy goats lived happily ever after.